Time to check out Chris Hemsworth in Green Zone. Go Google that one. All right, I'll say that again, but do it in your Australian accent. Time to check out Chris Hemsworth in Green Zone. Go Google that one. All right, um, because of where the movie takes place, why don't you say it in your best uh, Bangladesh accent? Uh, <laughs> 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 no. <laughs> I mean, cool. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Woo. Oh. Oh, dope! Oh. <laughs> this trailer instantly won me over. <laughs> Just complete 180. <laughs> huh. Hours. Proof of life is worth six hours ago. <laughs> 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 Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. Whoa! Damn! Great shot. Yeah. <laughs> Great shot. Wow. Just follow my money. That kid is a walking corpse. Yeah. Shit. He's learning to care. <laughs> Whoa, damn, the stun world looks great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, seriously. This is the most bone crunching trailer I've seen yeah, in a hot right. minute. I thought that was a pretty cool trailer for the most part, actually. I mean, yes, is a lot of it a cliche? 100%. <laughs> this character is a cliche. The plot, in a lot of ways, is, is a cliche plot. But I think what is the thing that people will be gravitated towards, myself included, is the type of visceral, gut punching intensity, the way it's captured, the immediacy, the moments. Are, are the things that I think people will ultimately be tuning in for regardless and of course the charismatic charms of that of Chris Hemsworth. And it's nice to see him A, rocking his Australian accent, yeah. B, doing a serious role, which will probably have a little bit of that repressed, badass sarcasm from time to time, <laughs> but I don't see it being like a funny character per mm -hmm. se. I'm excited for that part. And then also I think Netflix is aiming to try to find an audience around uh, Asia, India culture, probably the step in that direction. I'm not my brother. I don't know who most of these mm -hmm. people are, mm -hmm. all right? <laughs> I, I don't. Um, but I bet that a few of them, maybe a couple, maybe one, I'm not sure. But some of them are actually um, predominantly working actors uh, over in India, to say the least. That's a great way to start segueing audiences over there. Uh, one part of me wants to say, white savior. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, that's how we get it accessible to America. So yeah. We gotta be able to see ourselves in it. You got Chris.
Chris Hemsworth here and you got David Harbour here, but everyone else does not look white. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think the the action looks really cool and the I, I love uh, just how visceral everything feels and how kinetic everything looks. And it seems to have this great blend of handheld action, but you can still tell what's going on, you yeah. know? Uh, and, I, and I feel like they'll be mixing that uh, grid of a little bit of Paul Greengrass, but with something smoother <laughs> in the war field. And you know, now it's just a question of like, will the scenes in between the action be just as good as the action moments? Because this doesn't read to me as something that you can get away with just being like cool schlock. This seems not with like the subject matter. No, definitely not. <laughs> it seems like they're going for something that has deeper, grittier undertones throughout, obviously. I guess that's just where um, my question, my eyebrows are a little bit raised at. But for the most part, I feel like it's probably going to be a pretty cool movie, <laughs> you know? Yeah, 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 one would hope. I mean, like I said, this is probably the most, like, ooh, like, bone-crunching trailer I've seen in a minute, and it kind of reminded me almost of, not necessarily that it looks as good as The Raid, but it kind of reminded me of that in the way that it's a very straightforward, familiar plotline, but just with this really, really strong, energetic action style. Props to the stunts. I'm glad that Netflix seems to be throwing down on these types of projects. For Chris Hemsworth, I think this will be cool. I, I, I'm always worried about this kind of movie because it seems like they come and they don't necessarily make the hugest splash. However, Netflix has been seeing a lot of success with these movies. Just generally, they're mm. straight to Netflix actioners that you know have all the spectacle that you want from a big theater version. Well, so there's uh, a particular quarantine situation kind of happening worldwide and this looks like the most exciting blockbuster level Literally. film <laughs> coming out in the next couple weeks. Yeah, definitely. So I imagine this movie will be a cool worldwide hit yeah. on the streaming platform. I'm looking forward to seeing it trend as number one in the world. Yeah, well, and too, I mean, I'm curious about how this will bridge that gap towards, you know, more um, Indian and Asian audiences and whatnot, because, you know, I, I'm always wondering when they set some kind of crime story there, and it's all kind of in the seedy underbelly of that that world and like we got a lot of flack for not liking Rambo 5 which doesn't have the exact same plot as this but has certain similarities to it and that movie has a very watery set of characters and stuff so all I guess I would hope for is that this movie takes its situation and finds a way to nuance it a little bit. I think they will. I mean you got characters on both sides. A large chunk of protagonists but a large chunk of antagonists as well. You know like the whole action hero cliche, hitman, or in this case, like black market mercenary uh, type of individual, having to rescue, take care of a child, yeah. and uh, keep him keep him safe in the midst of uh, chaos, and uh, bullets flying everywhere. It's certainly a trope. <laughs> But I, was there a line in there about, uh, it was just such a fast trailer, was yeah. there a line in there that he had about Chris Hemsworth had a kid and he lost his kid or something, he couldn't save him? I heard some like generic line oh, thrown wow. out there. I'm not I, sure. I, I'm not sure if I caught that or if that or if my mind is or, misleading me yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, I can see it though. Maybe the, but, maybe the boy will become his surrogate son by the end. Well, that's what it looks like that he's doing, why he yeah. probably feels like he has to take care of him and why he has to keep him safe. It's, it's become more than just the mission at hand. He lost his own kid in this exact situation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just in a different country. Admittedly, I was a little bit thrown off. I thought this would be a goofy-ass movie from the opening the of a underwater dude. meditation. I mean, it's like, the way the trailer cuts it, it yeah. looked like he went cliff diving <laughs> and was a CGI cliff jump and then he led it into meditation <laughs> yeah. underwater. Like, oh, <laughs> this is the movie. <laughs> the really relaxed version of a superhero landing. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's what it looked like. And then the rest of the trailer was just hard, Super core, serious, and, very you know, grounded. Peter Berg, Paul Green grass style, Gareth Edwards type of action style, you know? Yeah. Are you guys looking forward to this movie? Do you think it's gonna be badass? Leave your thoughts down below. We successfully managed to do this without making a single Thor reference. Oh, Thank wow. God. Anthony and Joe Russo have directed a great movie yeah. here. Yeah, That's we... what everyone's gonna say. They're not gonna realize they're only the producers. This will be known as their movie. It's gonna be a dark world when they get all that credit for somebody else's hard work. <laughs> <laughs> Joe Russo wrote it, so. It's true. And it's adapted from a graphic novel. They just can't leave the comic book landscape behind. Well, subscribe to The Real Rejects, click that notification bell. Last but not least, let's end this with a <laughs> Naraj Krishnan. Well, Naraj, it's time to tell you a story. Oh boy. And we're gonna do it one word at a time. Let's do this, Naraj. Naraj was a big guy and had 
too many excuses for his lack of genitalia. <laughs> so <laughs> he headed to a doctor's office and inquired about penile procedures in depth. <laughs> <laughs> Information was abundant. And he said, oh, let's do it. <laughs> Wait for me uh, to pick money <laughs> from the <laughs> money. You said pick money. <laughs> Why'd you say wait? <laughs> All right. Because I was switching characters and the doctor was going to say something, but you know, that's the fun <laughs> of this game. Make it clear. Right now, in one word. <laughs> and then Naraj got a procedure, and now he has three testicles. End of story. <laughs> he didn't even get the penis. <laughs> Congratulate. Yep, that's what it's. Twist, twist ending. Naraj. Sorry about that, Naraj. Hey, buddy. See you, buddy. <laughs>